Riverdale has been Kinda? So we already knew that Riverdale was renewed through season 7. All the main cast has been contracted out that far, but just a few days ago we got word that the CW is ending Riverdale after season 7, okay? Which is about 5 seasons longer than the show should have been. I mean like seriously though, has any other show in the history of the world gone this far off the rails and still been renewed 6 times? Edgar ever never flew a rocket ship, Betty went back in time to mentally destroy her evil shadow alter ego, Cheryl's grandma was Octomom and popped out like 8 copies of her dad, and the show has 7 seasons! You know how many seasons Dirk gently got? Like two? But before I get into my real thoughts about Riverdale ending and all that, I figured it was time to catch back up with the show that's just defied all logical reasoning as to why it still exists, and see what everyone's getting up to these days. But before that, really quick, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes and members from all over the world. In fact, their entire catalog is subtitled in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. Now, of course, Skillshare has classes about the kind of stuff you'd think they would, you know, like how to animate, how to do motion graphics, but they also have business classes, self-help, productivity classes, there's a lot more here than you might think. So if there's anything you might want help on, like how to take better photos with your iPhone, or maybe you just want to pivot your career into something more fulfilling, or maybe you've even decided to turn into one of those plant people that I see all over the internet now, well Skillshare is a great place to start. Now some of you may know, I used to make a lot of video essays on this channel before I started this animation stuff, and I'll tell you right now, true story, I first learned how to do motion graphics and how to use Adobe After Effects from Skillshare, and then I took what I learned from that and applied it to animation, and now here we all are, so. Thanks, Skillshare. Right now, Skillshare has a special offer for all of you, okay? The first thousand people who join Skillshare using my link or the code Alex Myers, you get one month of Skillshare for free. Okay, so let's say you do Skillshare for like an hour a day. That's 30 hours of classes you could get for free. So if this interests you, I highly recommend you click my link down below, sign up to Skillshare, and start learning something new today. Okay, back to the show. If you remember from last time, Betty, Archie, and Jughead have superpowers now, and Jughead can read minds at the cost of his hearing, which he's kind of sort of found like a workaround for. I can hear the words forming in a person's brain just before they speak them. I mean, everyone is entitled. I mean, everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but yikes. I know. That's why I published it anonymously. Tabitha and my friends think my hearing's returned. It's not impossible to believe. The doctor said it might. My bad person for lying to her, to everyone. You know, I feel like this is not gonna work out too well, okay? Cause like one day Tabitha's gonna be counting the register or something and Jughead's gonna be over here like, you wanna do what to Judy from Zootopia? But okay, so there's a bunch of storylines going on, but there's three main plot threads that I think are worth talking about. So as per last time, the soul of Abigail took over Cheryl's body, and Cheryl's soul was completely obliterated, much like mine has been watching this show. Mistress Abigail's getting ready to go out, and we have to figure out a way to get Mistress Cheryl back. Cheryl is gone, vanished into the void. No, I saw her in a mirror that Abigail was looking into. I think she's still in her body. Yeah, okay, I'm not even gonna try and figure out how that makes sense. So like I said in the last video, Abigail's mission is to get revenge on the town of Riverdale for burning her at the stake back in like the 1880s or something. So she tries to poison everyone, or there's this one part where she tries to set Archie on fire. Oh, Archibald. I'm sorry, I mean like, Cheryl's known for wearing the most absurd impractical outfits of all time, you know, but like, what in the gall darned mother heckin' flip is any of this supposed to be? This is literally how the villains from Spy Kids dressed. Jughead goes over to Cheryl's house for some reason, not important, and runs right into Britta, whose mind he reads to figure out what's going on. I, I can't say. She made me promise. If you think it really loudly, I might be able to hear it. Mistress Cheryl is asleep and her ancestor Abigail Blossom has possessed her body and she's been trying to kill people, including you and your friends on the eve of the blood moon so Miss Topaz's soul will go into the corpse and Thomasina can be reincarnated into Miss Topaz's empty body. <laughs> how, do, how, how do these actors just say these lines? And then, and then go about their lives as normal. So what ends up happening is they tie Abigail to a stake, set her on fire once again, and her soul gets thrust out into that creepy doll from season four. And wham bam, blah, 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 what do you know, Cheryl's back. Because of course they would take like a potentially cool idea for a villain and get rid of it in two episodes, you know what I mean? Like the soul of an ancient witch that forces them to use their powers to stop her. Like no, 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 we, we can't have that. I mean that would actually kind of make logical sense, you know? And we ain't gonna allow none of that around here. Now after expelling the spirit of Abigail, Cheryl's starting to notice some, uh, some changes going on. Oh my god, Cheryl, you're burning up. You're literally on fire. What's happening to me? Uh, let's get you into an ice bath, okay? ASAP. Okay. Let's go. I'm literally boiling alive! 
Hold on. The water is pulling the heat out of your body, okay? Just ride it out and see if it dissipates. Yeah, so now Cheryl is super hot. Or er, wait. Cheryl's body is really hot. This is not coming out how I intended it. I'm trying to say Cheryl gives me a raging erect. We come to find out that this is all because Cheryl can control fire now. Cheryl, you're going to die if you don't do this. Focus on the logs, okay? Stop yelling at me! Burn those logs! 303 degrees. I'm trying, I'm trying! Burn her, Cheryl. Burn your mother, okay? I mean, back in season five, she could control all the elements, so I don't know why this is special, but okay, Riverdale, whatever you say. So this season, there's this new guy in town named Percival Pickens. Now, Percival's ancestors were some of like the earliest settlers in Riverdale, and he has a few thoughts about the town of Riverdale. Who wrote that article? It was me. I wrote it. I wrote the article. The article was a blistering critique of Riverdale. It excoriated Veronica and Reggie's casino. It condemned Riverdale's culture of street gangs, the serpents and ghoulies. It called out the town's long history of intolerance, ignorance, persecution, and backwards thinking. What's that? You think Riverdale might be having a bad time? You don't say! So wherever this Percival guy goes, weird things start to happen, like people just do things without remembering how or why they did it. Just a whole bunch of typical wackadoo Riverdale stuff. Now one day, Jughead interviews him about like how to fix Riverdale and all that, and turns out Percival knows that Jughead can read minds. Percival, do you really think that busing the unhoused out of Riverdale is the best that we can muster as a society? Well, as I mentioned before, my main concern is for the law-abiding citizens of Riverdale, those who pay their taxes. Tell me, are you having fun rooting around inside my brain, Mr. Jones? You see, right from the get-go, Percival's been infiltrating the city council, and he gets everyone to go along with everything he wants. And after a bunch of back and forth, we start to find out a little bit about what's really going on with him. Something very, very weird is happening in Riverdale. I'm talking about Percival Pickens. You heard him. He's been going around door-to-door -door meeting with everyone in town, trying to recruit them. Ever since Percival sensed me in his mind, I've been doing some research on heightened psychic abilities. You know, some people think that mind control is a real thing. I mean, if you really can control people's thoughts, and actions. Yeah, he needs to be stopped. Oh my goodness! Percival can control people's minds? As opposed to like, you know, Edgar Evernever, G and G, Jingle Jangle, or Hiram himself, and literally every other villain in the show? But all the same, the more they try to look into this Percival guy, the less they know about it, because he's just like this ghost who has no paper trail, no past, nothing. Now Archie and Jug had come up with this idea of like, if they can't fight his mind control powers directly, they could try to get the town to see Archie as some kind of local folk hero or something, and hopefully they can sway their support away from Percival. I'd like to make an announcement. As of today, the Hour Royale will be unavailable for town hall meetings. I've decided to reopen it as a boxing gym for local kids. I mean, are we sure that's a prudent idea? The Hour Royale started out as a boxing gym, and for a while it was a youth center. This would combine two of my passions, physical fitness and little boys. And so Archie once again has to call upon the power of his abs to inspire the town. <laughs> I'm gonna take over the town with my mind control powers. You'll never take me alive, Batman. Oh yeah, well check this out. So Archie ends up boxing Percival, of course, and this is when we find out that not only does Percival know about everyone's powers, but also he knows how to fight them. Percival must know about our secrets. It's the only way that he could have beaten Archie. How does he know? So after this, Percival becomes the new town mayor, and now he has complete control over pretty much everything he wants, more or less. Now Archie knows that he can't fight Percival directly, even though he fought a grizzly bear a couple years ago, but now of course he's no match for this pasty British doughboy over here. And so, now stop me if you've heard this before, okay, but uh, Archie gets help from Cheryl with her new fire powers so he can, uh, <clears throat> let me just double check here, cast a magic spell on him to transmute the palladium in his blood and make him invulnerable to literally anything. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can we, can we please just run that back one more time?
Okay, all right. Anyway, moving on. So now that he's the mayor, Percival's big plan is to tear down Pop's chocolate shop and build a railroad going through it, because it's the 1950s, I guess, and trains are a cool thing people care about. Now, obviously, Tabitha Tate is not too thrilled about this idea, so Percival sends someone to uh, get rid of her, shall we say, and you'll never guess what happens. <laughs> going on? Where are we? When are we? Is it really 1944? Yes, Tabitha. It's 1944. And also, I'm not Jughead. I'm an angel. I'm your guardian angel. <laughs> no. <laughs> how do you just say that? So we end up finding out that kind of like how Cheryl is a pyrokinetic, Tabitha is a chronokinetic, which means she can travel through time. And I'll tell you, this sounds way cooler than like everyone else's power combined. Like Jughead can read minds, that's pretty cool. Tabitha can time travel, uh, yes please. Cheryl can shoot fire, you know, and then Betty can uh, tell if someone's nice or not. Like, okay, this does not sound fair to me. But anyway, so Tabitha keeps traveling through time and running into Percival, who is seemingly aware of what she's doing and keeps trying to stop her. But every time he does, she just keeps jumping through time again. And this culminates into them having a sword fight in Percival's pawn shop. And let me tell you, okay, this scene is peak cringe. Who are you? Really? And I am the dog. <laughs> One thing a lot of people don't know about me. In college, I was on the varsity fencing team and a debate team. <sighs> this... <laughs> <laughs> this is this is painful to watch. This is like this is like worse than Dizzy Channel. This is like Shadow Hunters level of just. <sighs> then she drinks a milkshake out of the Holy Grail. Not even joking. There's no joke here. That's just literally what happens. And so finally, she ends up coming back to the present day, and that's when we get a startling revelation. <clears throat> Nuclear winter in every scenario that I played out. How many did you see? 1,384. All of our powers play a part in the final battle, but yours is especially threatening to Percival's because it's the closest to his. In every scenario, you die. And we beat him? You know, Jack, you seem awfully chill about all this. I can travel through time. Uh-huh. And I saw the entire world destroyed in a nuclear war. Uh-huh. And the only way we can stop it is if you die. Oh, okay. But all the same, that's pretty much where the show is up to this point. But okay, so joking aside, you know, I do have some conflicting thoughts about Riverdale being canceled. I mean, like, it's just a TV show. TV shows are canceled all the time, whatever. But like, I don't know, man. Riverdale's been like, once the show has ended, it'll have been like seven years of my life. It's not just seven years of me watching the show, like some, uh, at least half a dozen people in the world will have done besides myself. You know, I, I have a lot of kind of these like hot take off the cuff uh, thoughts right now because, you know, the news just broke a few days ago. Once the show ends next year, maybe I'll have more fully formed thoughts, but just, just my initial reaction here, you know, it is very, I don't know, like a show ending is never like a happy thing. I know some people are joking and memeing. They're like, oh, it's finally over. Our national nightmare is coming to an end. But like, I don't know, man. And, you know, because, you know, as, as dumb as uh, just objectively dumb of a show as Riverdale is, I mean, that's like, what, at least 100 people's jobs, you know? And like, I mean, OK, a show going on for seven years, like that's great for anyone. You know, like, I mean, any show, any show that goes on for three years is like, oh, wow, this was a, this, we had a good run. But like seven years is pretty hard for a show to do, especially nowadays when shows are getting canceled after like one and a half seasons, you know what I mean? But like Riverdale is definitely special to me, mainly because Riverdale is how my channel really got started in the first place. Like, you know, I, I, I made like a video essay sort of about Riverdale season one. Riverdale season two, I was like, oh, this is so bad now. I'm just gonna make like a dumb, goofy little cartoon where I just kind of laugh at how dumb the show is. And that's what propelled my channel into, now I have three million subscribers and it's, it's my job, it's my life now. You know, so Riverdale will always, be special to me in in just for you know a strictly selfish you know personal reason and like you know as as much as the show went off the rails and just went totally crazy it's like i mean i, I was here for it the whole time and like the fact that they got seven seasons while seemingly actively trying to get the show canceled like that's just hilarious to me they were just like untouchable for seven years and something else too like with my videos that i make it's i don't know it was always nice to know that like 
there was there was always Riverdale. You know, it's like every every couple months or so, I could put out a Riverdale video. I could always check in with the kids, see what they're getting up to. You know what I mean? And like that's just gonna be gone. I don't know if any show is ever really gonna take the place of Riverdale. Riverdale was such this this like anomaly of reality where it's just like like everyone we all knew that this show shouldn't be a real show and yet it, it was for many years and like i don't know like I, I can't imagine myself following another show the way i followed riverdale just because i don't know like you know riverdale came out and it was just that time when like teen dramas were still like a thing you know like vampire diaries and and Teen Wolf and all these things were kind of like still happening, you know, it was still like a thing. But like nowadays where everything is streaming and like traditional like linear television is just like basically dead. I don't know, I can't imagine there'll be another show like, I can't imagine there'll be another seven season absolute dumpster fire of a show like this was that's gonna be as fun to follow and as fun to be like, how is this show real? Like, because, because Riverdale did it all first, it's like, no matter what happens from now in any other show, it like it, it won't be Riverdale, you know what I mean? So yeah, I am kind of bummed out. I guess it'll be interesting to see where all the actors go from here. I I, I do want to see how the show wraps up because season six they got superpowers and time travel and witches and alternate universes and stuff. So like season seven, you know, if they're gonna go out with a bang, like what what the actual like what what could they do? What could they do unless they just follow along with what I said and like Archie goes back and like stops the dinosaurs and so you know what I mean like what could they do? But thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any videos from me. Send me an email at alexmyerscontact at gmail.com. Let me know what TV shows or movies you think I should do next. Check out my podcast with my girlfriend. It's called Doing the Devil's Tango. It's kind of like a dating advice, dating story kind of podcast. And uh yeah, it's about it. So above all else, everybody have a great day and I'll see you all next time.